You may be wondering why I'm opening this video from a bathroom, but I promise it will all make sense shortly. This entire 727 has been converted into the most unique hotel in all of Costa Rica, and it's gonna be our home for the next 24 hours. <laughs> oh, just in the habit of putting my bag in the overhead bin. Stick around and we'll give you a full tour. This morning we are heading to what we have been told is the most beautiful waterfall in the entire country. This country has a lot of waterfalls, so that's saying a lot. Wow. So worth it. We are the first ones here at this incredible waterfall. It is always so hard to pull myself out of bed before the sun is up, but I have never regretted doing it. And this morning did not break the streak. Incredible. This waterfall is about an hour drive away from the airplane hotel, so if you're tempted to visit after watching this video, I'd highly recommend this as a side trip. It is amazing what a difference 30 minutes makes. The waterfall is now completely packed. Okay, I'm starting to feel giddy inside. This was one of the things that we had planned back in 2020. So I have been waiting for two years to come here. I see the front of it. It actually looks like an airplane has crash landed in the jungle. It also feels like we've just walked onto the TV set of Lost. We have just checked into our Airbnb, which is gonna be our home for the next 24 hours. However, I look and feel like I've been living out of a car for the last four days. So I'm gonna quickly freshen up before I show you around. <laughs> it just felt right. <laughs> Lock here is getting ready. I wanted to give you a little bit of history of how this airplane ended up in the middle of the Costa Rican jungle. It was originally built in 1965, and the first airline it flew for was South African Airlines. Then at some point in its history, it was purchased by Avianca Airlines, and it flew for their fleet until it was abandoned in San Jose, and it was left there to rot. That is, until the owner of Costa Verde salvaged it, broke it into five different pieces, and drove it here to the middle of the jungle, where he built a pedestal to rebuild the plane on top of, so it would look like it had gracefully crash landed into the canopy of the jungle. Obviously, a ton of work went into making it livable so that aviation enthusiasts like Kara and myself could enjoy a night in one of the most unique hotels in the entire world. Just wait till you see the bathroom. All right, we're gonna start in the back of the plane and make our way all the way up to the cockpit. This is bathroom number one and it's the only room in the entire plane that doesn't have AC, so it kind of feels like a sauna right now, but it's because the back of the plane is just this open window. I think this is where an engine used to be and they've just put a net here instead. Also, if I look a little green, it's because they've used recycled wine bottles as the lighting. I'll just have a little Merlot glow going on right here. And the whole back of the plane is in the jungle so it feels a bit dark and the only window is way up here in this crazy looking thing. I'm pretty sure that was another engine. The rest of the bathroom is pretty normal. This is a regular toilet, not an airplane toilet even though that would be cool. We have lots of soaps and towels, a regular sink, a hair dryer. Moving on. Here we have bedroom number one. As you can see, they didn't really stick with the aviation theme. It has much more homey vibes. I'm assuming the reason they made all of the walls wooden and the floors is because the plane was probably too far gone to salvage. But there are two details that really just remind you that you're in an airplane. The first one is the shape, so all of the walls are nice and round throughout the whole thing. And they kept all the original windows, which I love. They didn't keep the shades though, which at first I was a little bummed, but then I realized like going to bed at night, if you didn't want to get woken up by the sun in the morning, you'd have to go through the entire thing and close each shade. <laughs> Firm. I appreciate the towel art. Over here, we have a nice big wardrobe to put our stuff. And on either side of the bed, vodka bottles as lamps. The alcohol theme continues. Moving on into the kitchen. 
It's actually quite big and pretty much has everything you would need to make a meal. We have a toaster oven, stove top, coffee pot, and they've provided some Costa Rican coffee for us. The coffee in Costa Rica has been so good. Thank you, Costa Rica. We have a microwave, a nice big sink, and a full-size fridge and freezer. Here we have a bar and a nice dining room area. And these two doors are basically where the wings of the plane were, but they've made two balconies instead. This is the entrance to the plane, but when the plane was a real plane, the entrance was this big window over here. And on this deck, we have this giant, beautiful tree trunk table, all kinds of seating, very nice chandelier that's not made out of alcohol. And the tagline of Costa Verde, where we're staying, is still more monkeys than people. So I'm hoping when we sit out here, we'll be able to see monkeys at some point. Because we are like in the jungle right now. But we also have views of the ocean, which is pretty cool. Could that be a monkey? Also, I just realized this, they built this big roof over the plane, which is great to have some shade because it is warm. So besides bathroom number two, I think this is my favorite part of the whole plane because this deck just gives you the best view of the entire plane. It is so nuts that this 727 is floating above the trees in this jungle. And not just any jungle, we are overlooking Manuel Antonio National Park, which is one of the best national parks in the whole country. So to be sitting in this spot with this view, the jungle, the coastline, it's just spectacular. Also, here's where you can have a really good view of the engine from the bathroom in the back. IMO, you should put a bunk bed up there, but you need to add AC. Have I mentioned that it's hot? In addition to some tables and chairs, we have this hammock up here. Chicken go downstairs. And here's where you can just relax and listen to all of the sounds going on around you. I will definitely be putting this to use. Okay, back inside. Real quick, I wanna say a big thank you to Surfshark for continuing to support this channel. Whether we're traveling through airports or living in an airplane, we know that we're protected with the best VPN on the internet. If you've never heard of a VPN, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and it encrypts all the data sent between your computer and the internet so that no one can steal your personal information, which is especially important for us when we're using free public Wi-Fi like in hotels and airports. If you're like us and you spend a lot of time staring at screens, a VPN can be a great way to improve your digital life because not only will it help to protect your online identity, but it can also be used to unlock content that isn't available in your area. It's super easy to change the virtual location of your computer and get access to a completely new content library. In the event of a crash, the driver always protects his site first. If you don't already have a VPN, we highly recommend Surfshark. It's been our go-to for well over a year now, and it's the only VPN to offer one account for unlimited devices. You can use our code Kara and Nate to get 83% off plus three extra months for free, and there's a 30-day free trial, so there is no risk to try it out. To get started, just click the link in the description below. Moving to the front half of the plane, we have this nice little living area, big comfy chair, a television, and this is the entrance to the plane that we saw from outside. And of course, some gym bottles. Here's where things get really fun. Bedroom number two is much bigger. We have two beds in here, and it's just so much brighter. This is the part of the plane that sticks out from the jungle quite a bit, so all the lights coming in all of these windows. We of course have vodka bottles as the the lighting by the bed. It makes sense when I think about the amount of alcohol that was probably consumed up here in first class. And now, the grand finale, the bathroom. They've converted the entire cockpit into the most beautiful bathroom. Maybe my favorite one ever. This competes with the bathroom that was in the pods on the side of the mountain in Peru. We have this huge window where the exit door used to be. Beautiful views of the national park. It's just a regular bathroom over here as well. Hair dryer, soap, sink, toilet. But the best part, without a doubt, it's the cockpit! I don't know what my obsession with cockpits is all about, but every time we're exiting a plane, you know, the pilot like slips out and says hi to people. I'm always like trying to look back in there. So anytime I get to like be in one, I'm so excited. They didn't leave much, but enough for it to be fun. The pilot and co-pilot seats are still here. 
I don't have anything to play with. There are these pedals, whatever this handle was. I feel like this would be like an emergency, like, let's get out of here. I just love sitting up here and seeing this view. One thing that's fun about the windows being dirty is I think that's a little monkey hand. I don't think any other animals have human-like hands like that. And I don't think there were any children playing out on the front of the plane. <laughs> I think that does it for the tour. I'm excited for this to be our home for the next 24 hours. Oh my gosh. I totally missed this. They left the seatbelts. Buckle up everyone. In the back, please take your seats. Flight attendants, get ready for takeoff. Oh my gosh, how do I get it off? I think I'm stuck. Okay, I'm gonna go to dinner. No. Go to the bathroom. I can slide out of it, I think. Wait for me. Moves a little bit. <laughs> We decided to move our coffee out onto the wing in hopes of spotting some monkeys this morning. So far, no luck. This is literally the stillest and most quiet I've heard the jungle since we've been here. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Did you see that branch move? It did. So we're still out here looking for monkeys, but I did just notice something we forgot to show you yesterday and something that we just discovered ourselves. They have left the landing gear on the airplane. All three sets of landing gear, the two on the sides and the one in the front, they're all still here. So cool to get to see it from this close. I saw it, I saw a monkey, he had a white face, he jumped from the top of that branch to the bottom of this one. I saw a monkey, I saw a monkey. Sweet little monkey having his breakfast. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's the cutest thing ever. Wow. It looks so human. <gasps> oh my gosh. They're so cute and tiny. I love their little face and their little ears and their little hands. And their tail is so long. This is so crazy. I'm never leaving Costa Rica. So the original plan for today was to head into Manuel Antonio National Park, which is the national park that we're overlooking from our airplane. Unfortunately, it's Easter weekend and the Costa Ricans really celebrate Easter. By that, I mean everybody gets off work and they limit the amount of people who can come into the national park and we're very last minute planners, so we couldn't get in. And originally I was pretty bummed about that, but now I'm not even sad. I mean, we're literally staying a half mile outside of the national park. The animals don't know what the national park boundary is. And I feel like we're getting the experience just by staying here. We just got to see tons of monkeys and I feel like way closer up than we would have seen them if we were in the national park. And last night, Kara spotted two giant hamster looking things. They're like really big squirrels, like big, big, like the size of a small dog, like squirrels this big. What are they? What are they? There's two of them. And and then the one animal that I've wanted to see this entire trip, we saw in the most unexpected place. Oh my gosh. As we were walking home from dinner last night, I was like, look, there's a monkey on the... There was a sloth climbing down the power line on Main Street. You'd much rather see a sloth in its natural habitat, but at the same time, we were able to get incredibly close and get an amazing view of this beautiful creature that you normally just see balled up in a blob in the top of trees. So yeah, I feel like we've gotten to see all of the best wildlife without even having to go into the national park. Also, after traveling around Asia quite a bit, I had become very jaded to monkeys. The monkeys over there in like Indonesia, in India, their pest. This monkey jumped on Kara's back, took off her sunglasses, and then this guy, you pay him 50 rupees and he throws him a juice drink and he gives you back the sunglasses. He literally threw the juice drink up to the monkey, the monkey dropped the glasses straight back down. But the monkeys in Costa Rica are just totally different. They obviously prefer to be in nature, they're not trying to steal your stuff. They're curious so you can get kind of close, but they're not gonna come like jump on your back or steal your sunglasses. All the things that we've come to associate monkeys with. Okay, so there are a few other aviation themed spaces around this resort that we're hopefully gonna be able to show you. 
Wow, this is nuts. So this is connected to a restaurant on the property and the guy at reception told us that they use this as a wedding venue. So you can get married in this airplane. Can you imagine walking down the aisle here? Da, 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 da. This is pretty incredible. I actually like the vibe of this airplane better than the one that we just stayed in. It's more rustic, more exposed. I have an idea. You wanna get married again? I was saying we buy an airplane. Okay, sounds good too. Okay, there's still one more airplane I wanna show you. Right up the road from the Costa Verde Resort is a restaurant called El Avion. And the entire restaurant is built around an old cargo plane called a Fairchild C-123. If you thought the backstory of the 727 was interesting, just wait till you hear the history of this airplane. It was actually part of one of the largest scandals in US history. Back in the 1980s, the US was funding guerrilla fighters in Nicaragua. And the guerrilla fighters used some of those funds to buy two of these C-123s. And these cargo planes were used to resupply the rebels who were fighting in Nicaragua. That was was until one of them was shot down and the secret was out. So at that point they couldn't use these airplanes anymore and they retired this one to San Jose where once again it was left to rot. That was before the current owner rescued it and turned it into the restaurant that we're eating at today. They've turned the inside of the fuselage into a bar and there's so much goodness still left inside of the cockpit. This week's video is going to be a short one because later today we're heading back to the airport to fly to a new country to begin what's going to be our biggest challenge yet. Why am I? <laughs> ah! A snake just fell out of a tree right in front of my face. We've already lost the girls. That is the meanest looking spider I've ever seen. He's like, Mah! We're just went down trying to go to sleep and we're realizing that we've made a mistake. That was one of the craziest nights of my life. Nature's toothbrush. So this is our fishing setup. No way! It's so crazy how quickly I'll go from here to here. Wow! Ah! Oh! Thank you, Earth! Get me off this island! <laughs> 